Today we're going to be working on Penny. I just installed my new 3D camera. The Insta360 X3. This is Penny the dog of Barbara Gullion and we just bathed little Penny. She's not in too bad a shape, but her owner brings her in on a monthly basis, which is really important for good coat health. And it's good for the dogs too. Gives you a chance to do their nails and clean out their little eyes. And all those little nasty problem areas around the rectum and that kind of stuff. So I'm just brushing out very gently. I hold the hair so that it doesn't hurt all. And I get around the head. It's not their favorite thing to do to be brushed out, but the thing is to be gentle. Penny's been with me a while, so it takes to it pretty well. I don't phase her too much. She trusts me. And that's always important with a dog. As you can see, right in front of me are my other groomers. We try to keep the dogs with the same groomers. <clears throat> dogs like familiarity. They don't like change. And neither do people so much. You have your favorite doctor, your favorite hairdresser. Why wouldn't you like your favorite groomer? And the little dogs, they're the same way. All right, I'm looking around for my tools. Now that I pressed the little dog out, as you can see, she's pretty unfazed. Typically, with each dog, I use a five. <clears throat> And if I like them a bit longer, use a four. And if they like them even fluffier, now I use a three and three fours. But as long as the hair is clean and brushed out, there's not normally a problem. Now her hair's not real long, and a five goes along good with this dog. As you can see, I'm pulling on her back to pull the hair up underneath. And I'm just gently going along with the patterns of the hair. You don't want to go against the hair. It causes a zigzag pattern. And we'll get the other side of the dog also, the same way we did that one. I don't know why, but dogs love to face the opposite direction of what you're working on. You can be working on their face and they're constantly trying to turn around slowly. <laughs> <coughs> now I'm going to gently get around a rectum there, just around the circular part. And I'm using the Moser. The blade is all the way up, so no, no skin gets caught in there. Only hair. But it's very short, so you have to be careful. Typically, I don't use the Moser for anything other than their feet, and their, around their eyes, and their belly in those areas. Right now I'm lifting her leg up and I'm cleaning underneath. You have to look at their 
little legs and stuff from all directions. Make sure you get everything. Make sure all the hair is even. And their armpits and all those little spots. Now Penny's hair is completely clean. That's why I always bathe them first before I groom them. And it makes it easier on the clippers too. And brushing them out makes a world of difference. You want to line the hair up so that the blades go through it smoothly. When you aim the blades in the direction of the hair, that way you don't get all these you don't want them to look like they've been grown. Another. And he's a particularly good dog. She's a little Maltese. And with all breeds, some are good and some are not quite as good, but I, I really like the Maltese breed. Now we're going to try and get up under her belly. And I'm just gently holding her legs. You don't want to panic them. You've got to be very careful around their little nipples. You don't want to nick them or get too close. Little things like that are easy to do. I've done it for long enough, though, where it doesn't bother me too. Just second nature to be careful in those areas. One of the things I really enjoy is the cordless clippers, though. We didn't have them like we do now, where they last for hours. Years ago, we would be lucky if we got a full hour out of a battery. Now, I'm going down the back of her neck, and I'm going to try and go all the, all the way around the dog's head. Starting with the back. Now that I've gotten the back, I'm going to do the front. And I'm going with the jawline. Gently going down. Always good to keep white wiping your lens because hair flows all over the place. Many times when I'm filming this stuff, the hair just floats. As you can see, Penny is unfazed by my groom. I think she even enjoys it. Now, I'm not coming all the way down on the back of her leg. I'm leaving some hanging. I try to give a little bit of shape to the legs. I get the front of the legs and the insides of the leg. See, there's a little bit of hair on the back. Just a little. And I'll go back later and flag that it look neat.
And as you can see, hair is falling on the lens of the camera. So hair just flows all over the place. Now I'm cutting the pads of the feet. <clears throat> I've got my blade all the way up. Otherwise, it, it doesn't catch little skin. I'm bringing it all the way to. Now, this is my wall bravado. Probably one of the best clippers out there. But this clipper is only used for very short cuts in very sensitive areas. There's five different heads on a bravada, or five different settings, five different lengths. But I always leave mine close up to the front, so no skanking it. I do each one of the feet. Makes it much easier to be able to get in and do their toenails. You want to be able to see the length in the toenails. And if they have clear toenails, you are able to see where the quick ends. Cut your toenails too short, you hit the quick, and then their little feet or their little nails bleed. And <clears throat> in my experience, there's nothing worse than to have a bleeding nail with a white dog. And an unhappy owner. There's always risk involved in grooming, but you want to minimize it as much as possible. Now I'm going to get her nails. Hold each nail, my fingers, and then I clip. Fortunately on Penny, her nails are clear and I can see the quick pretty, pretty easily. I'm just going to use my scissor and hit a few of those stray hairs. And I'm going to go around the feet. Now there's different ways of doing this. You can lay the foot flat and then go around. I prefer just to lift the foot up and go around. That way I know I'm getting all those little hairs. So we did the pads, we did the nails, now we're going around the feet. Wherever you see discoloration on a dog, like the back of her feet, that's usually a dog that licks a lot on her feet. The saliva in a dog changes the hair color. See, now I'm flagging the back of that leg. See where I left that little bit of hair? That way it gives a little bit of shape and form to the dog. She doesn't have a lot of hair anyway. This way, it makes them look neat. You, you don't want them to look like they're walking on stilts. Part of being a good groomer is that you're styling the dog. And that's why I might name the name of my shop Paul's Grooming Styles. Because I groom styles, not Paul's Shave Down Shop. I take great pride in the way the dogs look. Every dog that comes out that door goes out that door. I give 100% to every dog, and you should do the same if you want to be a groomer. Now, I don't always use a brush to pull the hair out. I use my fingers. See how I pull the hair out with my fingers? Okay, now, I'm going to work on the tail just a little bit. Hold the top of the tail and brush each side down. <clears throat> the 
dogs are not real crazy about having their tails messed with. They'll be gentle when you're holding their little tail. Now I'm going to flag it. Do like a half a moon, half a circle. Pull all the hair down, both sides. Then I get the other side. I need that looks. Then I drop it down to see how it hangs when it's down. And when it looks right, then I stop. Alright, I'm going to work on Penny's little face a little bit now. Trying to brush any goo or mats or anything out of her beard and her ears now this is always important is cleaning out their face pull the bra uh, the, the bridge of their head back and then I glide right up their nose right here's where I scoop 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 around their eyes very gently very gently Then you scoop, scoop, scoop in there where all that hair color has changed from their tears. Cut all that out. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Go. And I get around their eyes a little bit. Now, some dog, uh, dog groomers like eyelashes. I do not. I think they have enough hair around their eyes and they look beautiful. Now, I'm gently holding her mouth closed <clears throat> when I get around her mouth. So that if that tongue whips out, it doesn't go into the clippers or the scissors. Always look at your blade. Always make sure you know what you have. Typically on the heads, I use three blades. If I want to go long, I use three and three fours. The average dog, I use a four. That's a little, little shorter. And even on some dogs, I use a five. And the thing is to gently glide off their head in the direction of the hair. You've got to be very careful around their ears. Reason being, ears are very thin, like paper, and it's very easy to cut into them. So when you're gliding, do not push too hard. Okay. Um, I am just lightly gliding through with a four all the way around the dog's head. That evens up the hair and makes it neat. Now I know some groomers just like to cut the bottom of the chin and the cheeks and let the hair stay. But their head looks too big. You don't want their head to look big. You want it to match their body. Now, I'm going to do the same thing on this side here. Gently knocking off the high points. Not pushing too hard. This is what you call skimming. There's always going to be stray hairs, so sort of even them up and going with the direction of the hair. This is truly what you call styling. You're just sort of sculpting the dog with your clippers. Now the blades even up the hair, but the magic is always in the scissors. Now then, brush the hair forward, and I'm going to Knock off some of those highlights and go around the dog's head. 
I like my dog's heads round. And also, I pull the hair out of the ears. And I just lightly clip them off with the clippers, watching not to get any skin in them. Now, some dogs, or some groomers, pull the hair out of the dog's ears. I do not do that. I've read too many articles from too many professionals that says infection sets up too easily. I do clean the dog's ears thoroughly when they're in the tub, and I dry their ears thoroughly. And I do leave some hair in their ears. Reason being, that catches all the debris. And it keeps it from sliding into the eardrum. The dogs that I groom, they do not have ear problems. Now, whether that's attributed to what I do or the science, I don't know. But I trust, I trust it. I've done it for many years. I know what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to comb their ears down, and the ears go right into the... So we'll start with the bottom of the ears. We're going to do another half moon, similar to what we did with the tail of the dog. Another half moon. I drop the ears so I can see how they look once I drop them. Any stray hairs will immediately stick out. Because Penny is such a regular dog, I rarely have any any real issues. I'm just following the previous lines that I have done <clears throat> when they came in the last time. Now we're going to do the same thing with this here. And we're going to come all the way around with a half of them. Drop it, and then I look, see if there's any stray hairs, and you can see the stray hairs, and you just put them back. I measure each ear by each other, straight back. That way I know the ears are even. Now then, we're going to do a half a moon on the jaw, same way we did with the ears and the tail. I use curved shears all over a dog. Everything on a dog is curved. Which jaws, their legs, their ears, their head, their tails. Underneath. I'm going to extend that full moon right behind the ear. Bring it all the way up. Constantly primping and pulling on the hair. So I can see what's hidden. I'm gently holding her mouth tightly so that that tongue can't whip out and go into the scissors. That is so important. If you ever cut a dog's tongue by accident, don't panic. I just use a little bit of salt. Or you can use flour. But the main thing is to never do it. Cutting all those dark hairs out. There's always dark hairs around their mouth. See where I've cleaned around her eyes and her mouth. Those dark hairs are gone. The only thing about having a solid white dog is those hairs show up pretty red. In the brown hair. Now I'm... I'm mating the two sides of the jaws. I lift their head up and then I can look at both jaws. Make sure that they're both. Okay. Looks like that's the end of the groom. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you later.
Goodbye.